Hey everybody, in this video we're going to answer the question, what type of rock is this? We're going to take a look at all different rocks, including igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks, and we're going to examine their characteristics to determine which of those three categories the rock falls into. Now keep in mind, these are some very loose characteristics and we're going to make some generalizations here. There are exceptions to every rule, but if you follow these basic characteristics, most of the time you will make the right identification. So let's dive in. We'll start by looking at some of these key characteristics. And we'll begin with igneous rocks. Now with igneous rocks, there are really three main things to look for. They tend to have intergrown crystals, so you'll see different mineral crystals that are actually grown into and attached to one another. You might see a vesicular texture, which simply means that there are trapped air bubbles or gas pockets, and of course that forms when lava solidifies quickly on the surface of the earth. Finally, if that lava cools fast enough, you won't get any crystals or any air bubbles, and the result will be a glassy texture. So those are the three main characteristics we look for for igneous rocks. Crystals, vesicular texture, or a glassy texture. But what about sedimentary rocks? So these are rocks that form generally from compacted and cemented sediments. So you're going to look for little grains of sand, pebbles, clay, and silt, different sized chunks of rock that have been squeezed together until they form one larger rock. We might also look for those sediments to be forming in layers, and we might keep our eye out for some sort of fossils or other evidence of life, including things like footprints, worm trails, etc. Finally, metamorphic rocks. These are pretty tricky to identify, and a lot of them might give you kind of a false igneous identification. The one key thing to look for with metamorphic rocks will be banded crystals. So we're looking for these different, often distorted bands of crystals throughout that are the result of the intense heat and pressure that cause metamorphism. So let's look at some examples. On the left here, I have my list of all the different characteristics we just went through, and we're going to pull some rocks in, and we'll try and identify them together. Let's begin. Here's our first sample. Now, what jumps out at me are these little air bubbles. As we mentioned earlier, we call this a vesicular texture, and so this is an igneous rock. And if I had to justify it, I would simply say this rock is igneous due to its vesicular texture or the trapped air bubbles or gas pockets. Next. This rock, if I look carefully, clearly has fossils. These are fossils of some fish that died perhaps in a shallow lake and their remains were imprinted into the mud at the bottom and then fossilized over many, many thousands of years. So this is clearly a sedimentary rock because of the evidence of life or the fossils that we see within it. Next sample. Here, this might be a little bit tricky, but this is a great example of intergrown crystals. I can see different dark colored crystals, probably the mineral biotite mica, along with lighter colored minerals like quartz, and all of the minerals are kind of grown together, and so this must be an igneous rock because of the intergrown crystals. If I want to go a little further, I can hypothesize that this rock formed deep within the earth, and I know that because the crystals are large, and in order for crystals to grow large, the magma that created the igneous rock had to cool slowly, and that likely took place deep within the earth where it's warmer. Next up. Take a look at this. What I see pretty clearly are these different stripes, or what we call bands, of crystals. And if you look carefully at them, they're not perfectly horizontal, they're wavy and distorted. And so that is very clear evidence that this is a metamorphic rock as a result of the banded crystals. Now remember, this forms when rocks are exposed to intense heat or pressure, and that's what causes these bands to kind of foliate and form. Next. Here, I don't see any crystals, I don't see any air bubbles, no compacted sediments or evidence of life, no banding, and so this is what we would call a glassy texture, and therefore it is an igneous rock. This is the rock obsidian, which forms when lava erupts out of a volcano and cools really quickly, not allowing any crystals to form. 
Next, if we take a close look at this one, what we'll see is what looks like individual sand grains that have been squished and compacted together. And if we could hold this in our hands, it would feel just like sandpaper. And so that tells me that we have a sedimentary rock, and I know it because it's made of compacted and cemented sediments. Here's another example of what we just saw. These are also grains of sand that have been compacted together. This is a sandstone, so it's also sedimentary, but it's got an added characteristic, and that is the sand has been deposited in layers with slightly different colors. And so I know that this is sedimentary because it's got compacted sediments, and those sediments are layered. And what you'll notice is that those layers are perfectly flat. They're not distorted at all, which tells me it's likely sedimentary and not metamorphic. Speaking of metamorphic, here's an example of uh, the rock gneiss, which is metamorphic because it has banded crystals. Now this might be a little trickier because the layers, the bands, are horizontal. They're not distorted at all. But what tells me it's metamorphic is that it's very crystallized. And that's going to occur as a result of that metamorphic heat and pressure that takes place deep within the Earth. So those are some examples for you. Just to sum up our igneous rocks, we know they're igneous because they have either intergrown crystals, a vesicular texture, or a glassy texture. My sedimentary rocks are going to show me compacted and cemented sediments, perhaps layers of sediments, or some evidence of life, whether it be fossils or footprints or something along those lines. And finally, my metamorphic rocks are going to display banding, banded crystals that are often distorted. If you'd like to test yourself, go find my other video, which will give you an opportunity to see if you can do this identification on your own. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe and like.